Hey guys, I just wanted to let you know that something awesome happened not too long ago. My YouTube channel Great Scott surpassed the 100,000 subscriber mark and when I think about that I only had 15,000 subscribers at the beginning of the year, this is even more amazing. And as a thank you to my viewers, I ask you on social media what you would like to see as a special video. Either a FAQ video or a project video which involves fireworks or both. And obviously you want to see both. So let's get started with the most asked questions I found in the comment section of my videos. Let's start with the question which always pops up at least once in the comments for every video. Are you German? And the simple answer is yes, I am. I live in Germany, to be specific in Saxony, since my birth, which was around 22 years ago. The next question is the typical follow-up question, which says, why don't you talk German in your videos? And many people think I do it just to reach more people, which is only around 60% of the complete reason. Another 10% is that I like the language. I love hearing it, I love speaking it, and making those videos is just a great opportunity for me to practice it a bit more. And the remaining 30% is that back then when I started, and even nowadays, I'm not really proud of what YouTube Germany creators produce. Now don't get me wrong, there is a handful of creative, funny and entertaining YouTubers in Germany. But on the other hand, there is an excess amount of Let's Player, Vlogger, Beauty Channels and comedy channels, which get way too much attention for what they produce. I think those problems also exist in the English section of YouTube, but there the proportion between the good stuff and the bad stuff is not that extreme. And that is basically the reason why I don't want to be associated with other German creators and favor the English language in my videos. Next one. Are you an electrical engineer or self-taught? The answer is that I started off as an industrial electronics technician and in about two months I will receive my bachelor's degree in electrical power engineering. But that doesn't mean that I'm not self-taught at all. My profession during my studies included power grids, motors, transformers, short circuits, power electronics and so on. But everything that has to do with microcontrollers, like the Arduino, which is about 70% of my channel, is completely self-taught. That means if I learned it by myself, then you can do that too. Moving on. What is the best way to get started with electronics? Well, many people think that the Arduino is a very good starting point. But I don't think so. I started with very basic 555 timer circuits, different logic gate circuits and op-amp circuits. With them, you can learn all the basic theory that you need to move over to something like an Arduino. So in conclusion I would say, firstly go analog and then move over to digital. And if you need a well-written basic book about the subject, then I can recommend the arts of electronics. Okay, almost done. What about the electrical safety in your project videos? Now that is not really a proper question which pops up, but as soon as I work with 230 volts AC, suddenly every qualified person feels like writing me a message that my wiring or my design is not completely safe. And my answer to that is that I'm aware of those problems. Yes, I should have used a distribution box for the wiring, and yes, I should have made another socket for the power supply, and yes, I should have earthed the metal screws of the clapper circuit. But due to a very limited money and time budget, I sometimes forget such aspects or I use a compromise which might not be the safest, but it's definitely good enough for the project. Because I'm not trying to sell a product here. I offer entertainment, education and a solid base for your own projects. And even if you build the project or wiring like I did, there is no real danger. Only if you make additional mistakes by yourself. So always be careful, learn a thing or two before trying to play with mains voltage and most importantly, always respect higher voltages. This all sounds very serious, but in the end it's about your health and if you don't know what you're doing, then don't do it. 
Now aside from all the seriousness, let's do an experiment since this is still one of my videos. A couple of apparently electrically qualified people complained that the mains voltage is too close to the low voltage on the variable board of my clapper circuit. And if those two traces would touch, there would be a big short circuit and an electric arc and all the components would be damaged and it is too dangerous for the public. Well, let's try it out then. Here I connect 5V power with a 230V live wire. Don't try that at home. And nothing happens. The 5V power is actually galvanically isolated from the mains voltage, which means there's no different voltage potential for the 230V and this way no current can flow. And if something like that would happen with the circuit, it wouldn't change anything. It still works the same with 230V hanging around there. So basically, get your facts straight before complaining. Okay, last question. Which is not really a question. Many people wish that I never stop making videos. And this is questionable because about two months ago I uploaded a video where I said that I'm not certain that I will continue doing this on a regular basis. But finally I can say something positive about the subject. Due to the help through Patreon and the fact that more of my viewers use my eBay and Amazon links, I can now declare that those videos will continue for at least one more year. I cannot promise weekly videos, but as always, I will give it my best. And with that being said, let's end this Q&A video here. And if you felt like I didn't answer your question, then don't worry, maybe in the future there will be a regular Q&A show. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.